A resistance wire of uniform cross-section area is given to us. And the length is made of metal of resistivity 5.0 times 10, negative 7. Show the resistance of the wire is 3. Oh, so nice. Another show question. We just need to get the answer and we'll be good. If you have no idea how to do this one, just take the 3.0 and continue on. So R equals to rho, rho L over A is the resistivity equation you want to remember and use. So we just have to plug in and make sure all the units are correct. 5.0 times 10, negative 7. L is 2.0. A, where's my A? Ah, 3.3 times 10, negative 7. I think we're good. We should get about 3.03 .03 ohm. We got the answer? Yes, we did. So you submit everything. There's just one mark here to get the final answer. And of course, your equation. Write the equation. R equals to rho L over A. In case your maths is just wrong or confusion and I have no idea what you're doing, at least I can look at your R equals rho over A and go, okay, you understand the, 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 con the equation and how to use it. Now we come to a circuit. So we take that wire, put it in a circuit, and we connect it to a battery with internal resistance. So the cell has a certain electromotive force. 1.50. Wow, they give in 3SF1. Ah. What scary. Ah. The potential difference between X and Y is 120 volts. That is a very big clue that I'm going to write down straight away. So X and Y is considered what we call the external circuit. So your battery, yeah, your battery is supposed to give 1.5. How come you only get 1.2 1 outside? Because of lost volts. This internal resistance is going to cause you to lose some energy. How much do you lose? You could write it down. You lost a total of... Hmm, lost volts. You're supposed to have 1.5, but you only got 1.2 coming out of the battery. So that'll be 0 0.3 lost volts. Okay, so I'm going to write down. So anyway, there's a few methods we can solve the question now. We need to find the current in the circuit. Let's do... Hmm, to find current, we need VIR of, e of either the, the internal resistor or this external resistor, which is the wire. I think we're going to go with external resistor because we have V, we have R. We just need to know what the I is, which is what we're going to calculate. So I'm going to do for wire, V of wire, current through the wire and resistance of wire. I like to label it out clearly like that because oftentimes we sub in the wrong values. So this is 1.2 current resistance. Current, you should get 0 0.4. But don't get too excited with the nice number over there. 2SF, okay? 0 0.40. 0 0.40. You can lose marks if you just keep putting 1SF. So this one is 2SF, this one is 3SF, so you can follow the least, which is 2, so minimum 2. So one mark for final, one, and there's only one mark, right? Ah, yeah, okay, la, one mark for final. Reminder, 2SF. Don't know how many times I remind already. Okay, and we go to the next part. So once you've found the current, you find the internal resistance. Mm. There's two ways, I guess. We already know the current is 0 0.4. You could use your loss volts to straight away find the current because we know we know the V, we know the I going through the resistance and we can find the R. Or you can use the other method. Okay, let's zoom out and just... Can we see the whole thing? I think this is good. Okay, so first method... Let's say we already did the calculation above to find the loss volts. So for the small r, you can use V equals to IR. This V here is the loss volts. So this one can be 0 0.3 equals to 0 0.4 times R. What do we get? 0 0.3 divided by 0 0.4. 
0.75. Oh, sorry, 0.75. Yeah, we can get 0.75. Second method is also related but kind of a little bit different form. You look at the whole picture of this whole circuit. So the big picture is that when you have some EMF, you will lose some energy. And that is what we call terminal potential difference. This is supplied to what we call the external circuit. So EMF we have is a, what was it, 1.5, right? 1.5. Loss volts is I times R. Terminal potential difference. What's the terminal potential difference? Terminal potential difference is the same as the potential difference across the wire. So this is 1.2. Same as what this external resistor will receive because battery supply to external. Okay, 1.2. This one is 1.2. So it's like kind of doing everything in one step. Uh. Okay, so you can also use this method. This is method one, this is method two. Current, so let's substitute it in, 0 0.4. You will also get 0 0.75. It's just all in one. Okay, so these two marks, one is for final answer. One will typically be a usage of finding IR of uh, internal resistor, so something like this. VIR for use for the internal resistor in either method, either there or there. Right, next, next. Here's where things get a bit tricky because it's a potential meter question. You have a galvanometer and a cell of EMF down here, negligible internal resistance, which is great, makes things a little bit easier, and it's connected to a circuit as shown. So the resistance wire between X and Y has length 2 meters, quite long. Galvanometer has a reading of 0 when the connection P is adjusted, so that length XP is 1.4. Okay, I'm going to stop here. Whenever there is a potential meter question, the most important thing is actually the galvanometer reading of 0. What does that tell us? It's saying you have EMF here, right? The potential difference across this side is exactly the same as the potential difference across this side. Let's call this VXP. Then, so EMF is VXP. Balance. That's why there is no current going to flow through in that curved bridge that goes up. No current, balanced. Okay, so we need to find the EMF of the cell. So based on this alone, if you want to find EMF, you need to find what VXP is. If it is balanced, the current, hmm, do we need to know current? No need. We need to do a lot of ratios, yes. Okay, let's stay calm and think about this. Huh? So we have ratio of lengths. We know the length, 1.4 and 2. We know VXP. I think we can also assume that the potential difference is 1.2. across the whole thing because where's my I or the thing hang now because 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 there is no current flowing through the lower part of the circuit so if you want to think of current current is just going to flow through the top it's as if the bottom part does not exist as if la so we know the total is going to be 1.2 so here's the ratio that we're going to set up are you ready for it so vxp that small section over here, the ratio of that over the total potential difference across the whole wire is going to be VXY equals to, usually we ratio to resistance, right? So we'll do RXP over RXY. But hold up, hold up. We don't have resistance exactly. We don't have a lot of values, but they give us lengths. So that's where a potential meter comes into play. When there's resistance, you know it's rho L over A. And if this whole wire is the same, you can just say, oh, it's R proportional to L. The rest is the same. Lah. 
So I can just say, ah, yeah, the ratio is going to be the same, LXP over LXY. Now we have enough information. If I rewrite this, VXP, we need to find, right? Okay, so VXP, we don't know. VXY is 1.2 from the previous. LXP, length of XP is 1.4. And the length of the whole thing, 2.0. This is how we can solve by ratio. You need to know what this reading of zero really means and what is called balance point. So anyway, if you solve this whole uh, ratio, you will get a VXP of 0 0.84. And that is also the EMF of the battery because they are balanced. Galvanometer zero, voltmeter zero, ammeter zero means this one, same potential as this one. So 0 0.84 volts. This one is one mark. The other mark can come from a ratio of your uh, V and length. So that's one mark here and one mark here. All right, that's how we can do this. K kind of mathematical. Yeah, a lot of calculation in this paper. Oh, yo, then here a very long explanation. <laughs> Oh no, okay. The figure 6.2 is modified by replace, replacing the original resistance wire with another resistance wire. This new wire, same length, same metal. What's different? Smaller cross-sectional area. So that one rings some bell already. R equals to rho L over A. Same length. Same material, different cross-section area. So R is proportional to 1 over A. So changing this wire will change the resistance already. So connection of P is adjusted so that the wire has galvanometer reading of 0. So you change all the stuff and then you adjust it so it's 0 again. State and explain what's going to be this length XP. Is it shorter, longer or the same as the previous wire? Okay, now this, we are going to go back to our ratio to guide us a little bit here. This ratio that we just did. Vxp over Vxy, Lxp over Lxy. So let's write that here. Yeah, what are we to write? Huh? No space to write. I think we'll write it here. Vxp over Vxy equals to Lxp over Lxy. Now, what is changing, really? Mm, v, X, Y, does it change? Uh? It might change. Because if you change the resistance, the circuit current will change. So we don't touch that. V, X, P is fixed. Because you always want V, X, P to equal to E. You will always adjust for that. So V, X, P is always equal to E. We didn't change E, right? So V, X, P is have to be fixed no matter what wire we change. Because we adjust to zero point again. So V, X, P is fixed. LXY is fixed. So what really is changing here is you can say 1 over VXY is proportional to length of this thing. This is one method to use the equation to help us out. Okay, now we need to think through the whole process already. Okay, okay. Let's start with what we do know, which is the top right. What happens when you change the area? So we can say Resistance x y. Do we see what resistance x y? Uh? Resistance of wire increases. That is related to our relationship of cross section area. Smaller area, bigger resistance. So what that means for the whole circuit, the entire circuit, is that is the total circuit resistance increases as well decreases okay increases oh sorry increases i was thinking about current okay resistance increase the whole circuit resistance increase already because yeah. remember we are looking we are considering just the part with the wire like this r this R increase, everybody increase. So what that means is you will affect the current really. So that means number two, 
current in current through the battery. When resistance increase, current decrease or decreases. And we are still referring to only this loop. We say, Miss, what about the down there part? We don't care about the down there part because we eventually adjust until galvanometer reading is zero. So it's like there's no current flowing down there. It's just there. So this current flowing through the battery will increase, uh, sorry, decrease. And that will affect your lost volts right here. So let's add on to here. Um, and less lost volts. So mm, potential difference across XY, also known as terminal potential difference, increases. So I might need to digest a little bit. <laughs> Pause the video, digest a bit. And okay, so okay, let's stop here. So resistance increase. Okay, current decrease. Loss vote decrease. V decrease. So you'll have more potential difference that you actually get out of the battery because you don't lose so much. Now we come to this ratio. VXY is increasing. In order to achieve the EMF of, what was the EMF? 0 0.84, remember? 0 0.84 here means here must be 0 0.84. So if your whole re uh, potential has increased already, you don't need so much length to get that 0 0.84 balance. Here is 0 0.84. Okay, so we're going to use that. You can use that understanding or use the equation over there. So you, the last point you want to say is how that affects the length. So we can say... Uh, hence, oh man, my colors are just, <laughs> hence the length required for VXY to be 0 0.84, I'm just adding in a lot of details here, is shorter. Shorter. Because you still want to equal to 0 0.84. That's your EMF. That's fixed already. It's not going to change. Okay, so the important thing is understanding uh, step by step the changes to circuit. And of course, using the ratio and knowing what is changing, what are we fixing when we change the wire. Wow, this one, uh, I tell you, uh, very hard to get marks on. So I think what we can give is length is shorter. That's one mark. Probably going to be an A mark. Means it is linked to an explanation because you need to explain. So then the other thing that we need to probably mention is the potential difference across x, y increases. This one. This is M1. And the last mark is directly linked to our R equals to rho, R A, rho L over A. Do you talk about resistance? So you can say resistance Y increase, total, total circuit resistance increase. One of those things. That's okay. So that's B1 talking about the resistance. Okay, so that's where I would put all the marks at. And that's the end of this electric circuit question.